Hey, this is Rob Taylor for Photo Tuts Plus, here with another companion video, this time for the wine shoot article that you're presumably reading now. I'm looking at how I got from the straight out of camera basement shot you saw in the article, here, there it is, to the final image you can see below this video. This was the only shot in the final sequence you saw without processing. The others were all final process shots because I wanted to show the variety from the shoot but only have time to show the post work on one. So with that said, let's get started. Here is the one. Uh, if I take all of these off, then you can see the shot from the final sequence with raw adjustments applied. We will take a look at those raw adjustments, which I can easily do by double clicking right here because I imported it as a smart object. So, what did I do? It's actually very simple. I barely did anything to it. One was the warmer temperature. I didn't want it to feel like a cold, dark basement. I wanted a, a, a warm, positive ambience to it, more like a, a wine cellar. And I increased the exposure. Originally, I preferred the look of the darker image, but the uh, the wine bottles, as you can see, are sort of disappearing into the background here, and there just isn't really a whole lot of of, of clarity of what's going on in the image there. So I brightened it up. I can always take that down later if necessary. And I boosted the clarity because, as you know by now, I like to. And it brought out this gorgeous patterning in the label and in the straw and in the hammerhead. And some of this texture in the back here that's visible in this shot. Now I applied the same raw adjustments, identical plus the lens correction, automatic lens correction, to these other two shots, which I will show you now. This is the first one. As you can see, I've shifted the snooted speed light from the mellow bottle to the Chardonnay bottle. I like the aesthetic of light painting. I like the soft light. Uh, appearance it creates and you can increase that the effect of that appearance by being able to mask between layers and control very precisely where shadows fall the third layer the snoot was pointed up here giving me a splash of light on the background and showing up this rust and rustic wooden uh, hatch back there in the basement. As you can see, same color temperature, same clarity, same everything. Now, going back to this, bring this in, take this off, and you can see that I have painted in this wine bottle and the light on the hammerhead from the first image but allowed most of the light to fall in on the right hand side from the second image. This is what I'm saying about controlling the fall of light precisely with light painting because you can mask images together after the fact. Same again with the third image, which is simply adding a little background. Once we mask in the bottom two layers, then we have ultimately the, uh, the final image here. Just a couple of adjustments to make. And that's pretty much it because Compared to normal, this is a very simple post-processing job for me. 
First, I created a curves layer here called darken and it darkens the image. So I can mask in some some burning in precise locations. As you can see, that's around the outside where this white is right here to create a bit of a vignette. I feel like it emulates the uh, the tungsten lighting in warm wine cellars. I've also put in some dodging, uh, some burning rather, on the hammer handle because that's just way too bright. It's receiving too much light from the strip light, which was about right here, creating this highlight on each of the bottles. So I killed that a bit. And with some careful brushwork, I also created some extra shading on the hammerhead just for modeling purposes, make it appear a bit more 3D, allow its shape to uh, to appear more clearly. I also added right in here, a shadow from the red wine bottle right here because it was appearing oops, a little too uh, cut out without any shading around it. It, uh, it stands out quite clearly from the background and even from the hammer itself. It doesn't look like it's really in the scene, even though it was. So adding a little shadow right there just allows it to set itself a bit more clearly. Uh, the final layer is a curves layer, and it's only really for one purpose. This right here, after painting in the shadow, the the bottom of the wine bottle all but disappeared, and this little light line here that defined the bottom of the bottle was gone from the burning. So I just created another layer that would allow me to paint it in. I just brightened it a lot and uh, added just a little bit of lightness that would uh, display against the shading quite obviously. A very narrow brush there. And uh, that's pretty much it. You've got the final image right there. So from this to this in just a few fairly simple steps. Okay then, I hope this was helpful to you. If you haven't tried the light painting or layer masking approach before, it could be worth a try. I like the look of it. And I will see you later.